Hi everyone, Patrick here. Uh, today's video will be a book review. It is for The Empire's Ruin by Brian Staffeli. This is the first book in the Ashes of the Unhewn Throne trilogy, which is a new trilogy that takes place in the same world as the Chronicle of the Unhewn Throne trilogy. But please do not start your journey from this book. If you haven't read any of uh, Brian Staffeli's books, I think, I think you're going to lose a lot of uh, great experience if you start your journey from here instead. So The Empire's Ruin, it is amazing. It is absolutely amazing. It is a scintillating, explosive epic fantasy that has multiple legendary scenes that rival, in my opinion, the way of kings. Yeah, it is that good. This is not a praise that I give lightly because, well, uh, the Stormlight Archive is one of my top favorite series of all time. And it's been four years. It's been four years since uh, Brian Staffeli released uh, any book. Yeah, The last book that he released was A Skullsworn. And it was four years ago in 2017. And I read Skullsworn uh, about two years ago. It is one of my favorite books of all time. I like Chronicle of the Unhewn Throne trilogy, but Skullsworn was the one that made me a fan of Brian Staffley. It was stunning to me how much he has improved in his uh, writing craft since Chronicle of the Unhewn Throne trilogy. And The Empire's Ruin is one of my most anticipated releases of the year. So does it live up to expectation? It exceeded it. It's insane how good this one. It's very epic, it's very brutal, and yes, this is a continuation to the Chronicle of the Unhewn Throne trilogy. Can you read this without reading the previous books? It depends on each reader, but I personally say no. You will be missing out on so much important context, nuance, and character development even if the main story itself is technically a new storyline. To give a few popular examples, are you okay with reading Iron Gold by Chris Brown without reading uh, the first Red Rising trilogy? And are you okay with reading Tony Man trilogy by Robin Hobb without reading Farseer trilogy first? If the answer to these questions is yes, then yeah, you can start reading from here without reading the previous books. I honestly can't and I personally won't do it. As a reader, I need to read everything in publication series or order. This is not just for completion's sake but also to make sure that I could get every meat of the story and character's journey. The Empire's Ruin is the first book in the Ashes of the Unhewn Throne trilogy. More than five years have passed since the end of The Last Mortal Bond, the last book in the Chronicle of the Unhewn Throne trilogy, and the Anurian Empire is disintegrating. The number of Ketral, which is giant warhawks, that the Ketral, uh, with a capital K, has in their arsenal has dwindled, and the Kenta gates that allow instant travel across the vast empire can no longer be used. In order to save the Empire, Gwena Sharp, our main character, received a mission from the Emperor to take a journey beyond the Anurian Empire to Menkidok, a dangerous land that warps and poisons all living things. This is for the purpose of finding a possible nesting ground of the giant warhawks that the Ketral usually use. Then there is also Rook's survival story in Dombang, and in the meantime, Akil, which is among that turn con artists, may hold the secret to using the Kenta Gates. If you crave a new epic fantasy tome with a darker tone, this should be right up your alley. Clocking in at more than 300,000 words and almost 800 pages long, The Empire's Ruin is a character-driven epic fantasy that magnificently displays the themes of life, death, faith, leadership, loyalty, and overcoming failures. The three main POV characters have storylines that were mostly separate from each other, but I found all of them to be almost equally captivating. They cannot be equal because there is Gwena, and Gwena's storyline was just too top-notch. So Gwena Sharp. I honestly thought Staffeli wouldn't be able to craft a character that outshine Pire Lakatur, the main character of Skullsworn, and I was proven wrong. I mean, I have always been a fan of Gwena from the first trilogy, and I'm sure that sentiment has been echoed by a lot of readers as well. However, Staffeli's achievement in building Gwena's character through the brutal voyage in the Empire Ruin should earn Staffeli an award or two. It was so good. It was insanely good. Gwena's grand character arc reminded me of reading Kaladin's story in The Way of Kings, and again, this is not a praise that I give lightly. It is worth remembering that Gwena's role in the Chronicle of the Unhewn Throne trilogy is not small. It's not small at all. She even became a main character in The Last Mortal Bond, the third book in the Chronicle of the Unhewn Throne trilogy. And that's why I always say, it is very necessary to actually read the uh, first trilogies to get all the character background and development of Gwena. At least for that, because Gwena is really the main character of this book. 
and there is so much more reason beyond that which I cannot really explain because of spoilers, but yeah, if you want to fully appreciate the immense character growth and development that Gwena undertook in this book, you, you have to read the first trilogy first. Gwena is absolutely awesome. She is unconquerable, she is utterly inspiring. And the Empire's Ruin is not for the faint of heart. Gwena undergoes a lot of brutal torment. Whether it's physically or mentally, it was simply crazy. But I'm always enthusiastic about reading broken characters that have lost everything but still try their best to fight and survive, no matter what. I have a soft spot for these kind of characters, especially if they were able to find hope in the middle of unforeseen events and characters. Gwena's relationship with the ragtag band of semi-strangers that she met in this book was truly one of the key strengths of the book for me. Kiel, Rat, uh, Cholu, Patek, Bumadar, all of them were great characters that made Gwena's characterizations even felt more genuine and very easy to care for. After reading The Empire's Ruin, I will say this, Gwena has become one of my favorite characters of all time, very easily one of my favorite, and I think she is indeed uh, Brian Staffili's most well-crafted character. As I've mentioned, Gwena's story was just too spectacular, and from my perspective, she is indeed the main character of this novel. But this doesn't mean that the other character storylines were boring. The second main character is Rook Lakatur Lanlak. He is a brand new character, but if you've read Skull Sworn, you'll know who he is. Rook's point of view was quite likely the only one that you can read without reading the previous books first, but you would still benefit from reading Skull Sworn, because Rook's entire storyline takes place in Dombang, the setting of Skull Sworn. Dombang is a terrifying place, and Staffily utilized Rook's point of view chapters to show the decimation and conflicts that can be brought by fate. I love reading the characterizations of Rook and his development with BN. Their romance and survival stories always felt engaging to me. Akil, on the other hand, didn't have too many appearances compared to uh, Gwena and Rook, but there is a lot of important moments in Akil's story. Akil was a side character in the Emperor's Blade, which is uh, Brian Staffley's debut. He is also one of the main characters in the Emperor's Blade, Caden. He is one of his friends. And similar to Gwena's chapters, reading the Chronicle of the Unhewn Throne trilogy first will definitely benefit you when you're reading about Akil's storyline. Akil's storyline is heavily intertwined with the characters and concepts that appeared in the first trilogy. The Shin Mong, the Kenta Gates, the Vaniate, and the Sestrim, they were all crucial elements in the first trilogy and in this book. I honestly wish there were more of Akil's chapters because uh, his story was actually pretty interesting to me. And it seems like judging from the end of this book, it seems like we will get more of him in the next book. Maybe. Venturing beyond the Anurian Empire to Menkidok and Dombang, then learning more about the Nevarim, Sestrim, Monsters, Lich, Ketral, and more was a terrific reading experience. I've always felt that Staffili's world building could be expanded further, and he delivered what I wanted here. The Empire's Ruin is both epic in scope and battle sequences. Praising Staffili's action sequences in The Empire's Ruin can be considered a challenge on its own, especially if I want to make this as spoiler-free as possible, which I shall do. Why? Well, he didn't just create one unforgettable scene, and he also didn't create two. He wrote at least three incredibly iconic scenes that are on par with the Immortal World scenes from the Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson. There is the blood craze and pulse pounding aerial battle, the blood soak kill hauling scene, lastly the entire final chapter left me literally breathless. The culmination of stakes, unpredictability, intensity, and emotions into the final chapter was was just staggering. Additionally, I want to say that Jonon Lam Jonon is one of the most despicable characters that I've ever come across in fiction. This is in a good way because I love to hate this character. I think he was meant to be hated and every confrontation between Gwena and Jonon they were some of the most intense scenes of the book. There is so much fury, chaos, tension every time these two characters uh, collide with each other. And I don't think this book would have been this awesome without uh, Jonon's involvement. Ephelis' characterizations and actions were deadly precise, and this book shows once again why Brian Staffili is one of the best fantasy writers when it comes to prose. Ever since I finished Skull Swan a few years ago, I've constantly praised Staffili's prose. Philosophical, memorable, and also beautiful and destructive. Staffili's prose is exemplary to me, a gift to the fantasy genre, and I'm truly grateful that I get the chance to read another epic fantasy novel from him. Sometimes, I believe that the greatness of prose in a fantasy novel can be measured by how many passages we end up highlighting. Well, I've certainly done that course of action here so much. 
I love fantasy. High fantasy and epic fantasy are my favorite genre of books to read. And it is always a blessing to me to be reminded just how excellent new fantasy release can be. The dark brilliance of the Empire's Ruin is inestimable. The ambitious blade of imagination that Staffily manifested in this book surpass my expectations in every possible way. Heart hammering onslaughts, savage battle sequences, and superb character developments, and also enviable prose. Everything about the Empire's Ruin works for me. If everything about it just clicked for me, and this is truly a work of art. I think after this book, it is very safe for me to include Brian Staffily as one of my favorite authors. Seriously, he is so good. I cannot wait for the next book already, and there's still three months before this book is officially published. If you haven't read Chronicle of the Unhewn Throne trilogy, do it now. You still have some time before this book come out. Judging exclusively from the Empire's Ruin, I think, I think this series will topple the first trilogy in every possible aspect. Seriously. It is so good, one of the best books of the year, for sure. Let me know whether you have read Chronicle of the Unhewn Throne trilogy or not, and whether this book interests you or not. This book is very high on my list of best reads of the year so far. And yeah, well, that's it from me today. As always, thank you so much for watching, and thank you for your support. Bye-bye.